guys, welcome along to another Sony Vegas Pro tutorial. In this video, we're going to be making this epic glitch intro. Okay, so I haven't made an intro tutorial in a while. If you want to make more of these, be sure to click the like button below to let me know. As always, if you want to be notified of future videos, be sure to click subscribe. Right, let's get on to creating the intro. I'm just going to create a new project by clicking File New. Now I've included the files I used in this intro and put a link in the video description for you to download them. Uh, once you've downloaded them, just simply extract the zip file and uh, open the extracted folder. And then you should get an audio file, a background image, and the font file. The first thing you're going to want to do is install the font. This can be done by opening up the font file and then clicking that install button there. I've already got the font installed, so I'm just going to exit out of this. Once you've installed the font, if you had Vegas open, you might need to restart it for it to appear in the font list. Okay, with the audio and background files, I'm just going to drag these straight into the Vegas timeline, and then make the background image the same length as the audio by dragging it out like this. The first thing I recommend you do when you're going to create an intro on Sony Vegas is to get to know the audio that you're working with. I recommend you listen to it a few times, Pick up on the hits and impacts because we're going to be identifying these to help us align and sync the text transitions and stuff. To help identify these, I'm going to use a built-in feature in Sony Vegas called Markers. They're a great tool and I recommend you use them in your own projects as much as you can. What I'm going to do is listen through the video and then create markers at the hits and impacts. To create a marker, all you need to do is press the letter M on your keyboard and it'll create an orange ruler type line through your timeline at the frame that you're at. So, if I play this through and create those markers at the hits and impacts for the transitions. Okay, now we've got our four markers, which will help us a lot out later. You might want to try listening to the audio a few times before you create these markers, uh, just to get a little bit more precise. But you can always move or delete them once created. So to better position the markers, you can actually zoom in on the audio waveform with the scroll wheel on your mouse and then look for any spikes in the volume and then precisely move the marker to a better position like this. Okay, now we've got our markers in place, I'm just going to create that little fade at the start of the intro. You can do this by clicking at the top left corner of the background in the timeline and then dragging your mouse to the right. I'm going to make the length of this almost as long as the first stretch of audio we have here and I'm going to match it up nicely like that. I'm also going to change the fade type by getting that little quarter circle icon there and if you right click when you have that what you can do is change the fade type. I'm going to select this steep one because it changes how the fade works and I think this one looks a lot better. Now the next thing we have to do is add the text. Let's create a new track for the text by pressing Control, Shift and Q on your keyboard or you can simply right click on the timeline and then select insert video track. Okay, we're going to use these markers that we created earlier to perfect the text position in the timeline. If I click on that marker, it'll move the current time indicator there. Now what I'm going to do is move back 10 frames where we'll put the zoom in so it still hits at this impact. If I press the left arrow key 10 times, you'll see that I can move frame by frame. Now I've moved it back 10 frames, I'm going to right click the current time indicator and then select Insert Text Media. This will position the text at that point. Now I'm just going to go trim the other side of the text in the timeline to make it fit between those two markers there. At the second marker here, that's where we're going to make our second load of text come in later. Right, so now we've got the correct position for our text, we can change it. To change it, you want to click the Generated Media button. It's this one here that kind of looks like a movie clip. Okay, now we should get this window pop up, and we can change the text in here. I'm just going to delete this sample text, and then type in my own text. I'm going to use Aquil, and then press Enter to create a new line. And then I'm going to use Presents. You would of course use your own text here. Okay, now we've created the text, let's do some formatting. Select all of the text, and we're going to change the font to the one that we installed previously. If I click the drop down and then press B on my keyboard, I'm just going to select the Bank Gothic MDBT font. 
Now I'm going to change the font size of the presents text to kind of make it the same width as the actual text up there. So first I'm just going to select the presents text and then I'm going to change the size to around 36. Once you've done that, uh, select all of the text and then press the center line button there. Now if we look over in the preview over here, you see that we have a huge gap between the new line. So to remove that gap, let's go back to the formatting options and then we'll click the advanced drop down here. I'm just going to scroll down a bit and then you want to click on the little line spacing adjuster there and it should flash purple when you've got it selected. Okay, once it's selected, just press the left or right arrow key. I'm going to use the left key and I'm going to press that a few times until the gap gets smaller. And about 0.6 works nicely in this example. Now we're going to add kind of like an outer glow to the text to kind of make it jump off the background a little. And we're going to use the shadow drop down for this. So if I click on that, you want to make sure that the shadow enable is checked. And now if we look at the preview here, we can see that the shadow looks really ugly. To adjust this, what we're going to do is set the shadow offset for both the X and Y axis to zero. Okay, that looks better. And that's it for the text formatting. I'm just going to close out of this now. Now we're going to add some effects to the text to make it look a little better. I'm going to open up the video effects tab and then select the bump map plugin. I'm going to drag and drop the upper right glow preset onto the text. And I'm going to make a couple of tweaks in here. I'm going to change the bump height to around 0.2. And then I'm just going to bump up the intensity a bit to like 0.25. Now we've done it here, so I'm just going to close out of this. Okay, now we've got all the text formatting and effects done. And the text is looking great. So now we have to add the movements and zooms in on the text. We're going to go to the event pan crop window for this. So on the text media and the timeline, you want to click this little box here to the right of it. And then you get this window pop up called the event pan crop window. What we're going to do is create keyframes in here and add the motion to the text. If you're not familiar with keyframing, a keyframe is basically a point that tells an instruction. If there's more than one keyframe, what it'll do is transition between those keyframes. Now everything already has one keyframe, which basically determines how it's originally positioned. However, if you add more than one, you can kind of make it move and change its text position over time. And this is our first keyframe here, it's kind of like that little diamond over there that you see. Now we're going to create the rest of our keyframes. If I make sure that the first keyframe is selected by clicking that little diamond there, and then move 10 frames in time by pressing the right arrow key 10 times. Then create a new keyframe by pressing the insert keyframe button. Okay, now we've done that. So what I'm going to do is create another keyframe at the end of this just by clicking at the end there. And creating another keyframe by clicking that button again. Then I'm going to move 10 frames inwards and create another keyframe. Okay, so so far we haven't changed anything, so nothing's happened. Remember at the start when we created the text, how we made it 10 frames before that impact marker? We made that for the zoom. There will be a 10 frame zoom here and then it will hit that impact. Okay, so if I go back and then select the first keyframe, and you'll see this little box up here. If we drag this box in by clicking one of the corner points and dragging it towards the middle to make it smaller, you'll see that the text becomes bigger. We don't want to see the text at the start of the zoom. So if I move this box around with my arrow keys until we can't see the text, you may need to zoom in on the box with the scroll wheel on your mouse to make it smaller. Now we've done that, if we go back to the little keyframe workspace down here, because of the second keyframe we made at 10 frames was back at the default position and the first keyframe was zoomed in, what's going to happen is it's going to transition between those two. It starts off zoomed in like how we made it, and then over those 10 frames, it zooms back to the original point that was there. Now let's do the end keyframes. I'm going to go and select the second to last one because we want to add some type of movement between this long part that we have here to make it so it's not kind of boring. If I select this keyframe and then move the box out a bit, it'll slowly transition from those two points over time, uh, as we can see here. The longer the distance between the keyframes, the slower the change. The closer the distance, the faster the change. 
Now we've created a slow movement there, let's do the final zoom out, making the text smaller. If I select the last keyframe and then zoom out of the event pan crop window with the scroll wheel on your mouse, and what you want to do is click on one of the points and then drag this box to as big as you can to kind of make it zoom out between those two keyframes. Okay, so there's one more thing that we're going to do and that is change the keyframe type. So it's not linear meaning constant change. If we select all the keyframes by clicking the end and then dragging to the start, now we can change all of those keyframe modes at the same time. Now if I right click one of the keyframes, you'll see that we have a few keyframe modes. If I select the smooth mode, it will make the text kind of zoom in a lot smoother instead of constant, which will give it a lot better effect in the end. You'll see that the color changes when they're all set at smooth to a light purple color. Now we've done with the keyframes, let's close out of this. If we preview the zooms that we just made, you'll see that it does look good. Now we're going to create the second text. Don't worry, we won't have to do all of that again. We can just simply copy the text media in the timeline by clicking on it and then pressing Ctrl C to copy. And I'm going to create a new track for this text. Now what we want to do is make the second text appear in front of the first text when it's zooming in. Let's go to back to that second marker that we made and I'm going to move back 10 frames to let the zoom end on the impact. Once we've done that, now we're going to press Ctrl V to paste the text at that point. And you should get a pop-up, just select create a new copy from the source media and then click OK. Now if we preview this, you'll see that the text zooms in on the other one, which makes it look very nice. However, we need to change the actual text. Go back into the generated media window for the second text by clicking that film button on it. And then simply replace the text. Ok, I'm going to use the text another for the first line. And then I'm going to use the text epic video for the second line. If your videos aren't epic, you can of course use any other text. Now we've almost done with the text, I'm just going to trim the second text to make it kind of cut out at that third marker. We will introduce the glitch effect later. And what I want to do is remove that zoom from the end of the second text, so it kind of glitches out unexpectedly. So to do that, let's go back into the event pan crop window for the second text. And then we're going to delete that last zooming keyframe we made earlier. And then we're going to click on the third one and just drag it to the end so we still get that slow movement over that long period of time there. And we're done with that. One more little adjustment I'm just going to do is add a little fade out on the first text just so it doesn't disappear so harshly. Okay, now we're finished with all of the text stuff. And finally we can go on to the glitch. I'm just going to create a new track for that. And for the glitch, we're actually going to use a solid black to act as kind of like a placeholder for the effect. Okay, so to insert a solid black, we're going to go into the Media Generators tab here. And then you want to select the solid color. And then click and drag the black preset into the timeline, starting at that third marker there. And then you just want to close out of this box that we get, we don't need to do anything here. And then we're going to trim the black solid. I'm just going to zoom a little bit out of the timeline here with the scroll on my mouse. And trim that so it's between the third and fourth marker. Okay, now we have the area that we want the glitch effect to be. We just need to add it. In the video effects tab, go and find the TV simulator plugin. And once you've found that, just drag on the TV look preset onto the black solid that we made earlier. And what I'm going to do in here is just increase the static setting to about 0.5 to give it uh, a little bit of a noise effect. Then I'm just going to close out of this. You'll see if I go to the static and the timeline that we can't actually see any of the background behind it. To fix this, what we're going to do is change the composite mode of the track. For this, you need to make sure that you have the black solid on its own track so we don't affect anything else. And if you've done that, what you need to do is click the little compositing mode button on the track and then we're going to change it to add. This is just going to change the blacks and the glitch to transparent but it's also going to allow the TV simulator effect that we applied to still be visible. And now as you can see we can actually see the background behind that glitch effect there. One thing we're going to do is kind of make the background fade in and out when the glitch is happening to just improve the effect. 
Now I could go splitting and trimming and creating a whole lot of fades, but there's really an easy way to do this. On the background track, if I right click it and then go to insert remove envelope, then I'm just going to select the composite level. This will bring up the composite level envelope, which basically determines the transparency of only the background layer. You'll see that there's a blue line at the top of the track here. That indicates that it is fully visible. If the line was at the bottom, it makes it not visible, and anything between can adjust the transparency. We can actually add points that we're going to do to determine the transparency over time. Similar to the keyframing we did previously, if I double click on the blue line at the third marker, this will give us a starting point. If we hold down shift and click after that first point, and then drag the mouse, we can actually draw the points on the media in the timeline. I'm going to make it so it slowly goes down to about half visible, and then I'm going to make it half visible for a bit of time, and then I'm going to make it invisible for a bit, and then I'm going to make it come back visible before the fourth marker. And then after the fourth marker, I'm going to make it fully visible for the bigger waveform there. And then I'm just going to fade it out for the smaller waveform in the audio. You can always adjust these points just by clicking and dragging them if needed. Try to make yours look similar to mine, but definitely have a play around. This tool is really helpful in a lot of projects. One more thing I'm going to do is just add that little fade at the end of the glitch, so it kind of flicks out nicely. And there we have it, we've made our intro. One more thing you can do if you want is kind of add like a vignette to darken the edges of the intro. And to do this you can just go to the Media Generators tab, click on the Color Gradient plugin, and then just drag in the elliptical transparent to black into the timeline onto a new track. And then I'm just going to change the second point of the gradient to make it a bit smoother by simply just clicking and dragging it to one of the corners increasing the gradient length. Okay, this looks pretty good. I'm just going to trim this to the same length as the rest of the intro, like this. And then I'm just going to drag it below the glitch effect so it doesn't interfere with it. And then I'm just going to lower the transparency of the vignette to around 50%. And now we've finished with the intro. If you made this intro, be sure to post it as a video response to this video so I can check it out. Don't forget to like this video, leave any comments below, favorite it, and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching.